Hi, it's Mr. Dangan for today's Friday functions. I'm pleased to share with you the isMatch function. This is a powerful one that can match any text string against anything else that you want, whether it's an email, a letter, a digit, a set of digits, and so on. There's predefined expressions, but you can certainly type your own. In fact, anything that you remember from the regex commands in Excel or Google Sheets, all of those things work. So let's check it out. I set up a SharePoint list here where I'll be typing in an email address, a phone number, and a website. And I could validate these on the back end right inside SharePoint, but I also want to validate it as the user's entering things inside a form that I build in Power Apps. This way, they get real-time feedback on if they're typing things in correctly. I created a Power App straight from my SharePoint list, and then I removed all the other cards that I didn't need so that I can only reveal the email address, the phone number, and the website. I unlock these cards so I could stick in a check icon. And I'm going to use this check icon to be visible when whatever the user types in matches what it should be. And if it doesn't, in other words, if they haven't typed anything in yet, I don't want to show this check mark. All right. Let's start with the email address. We'll be practicing the isMatch function in the visible property. This check mark is going to be visible. So when it matches, whatever I type into this in email box, which I've titled input email, if the text of that input box matches the email type, this check mark will show up. Let's check it out. If I type in test at fakeemail.com, it's good. All right. That was an easy example. Let's go back to the documentation. Email works right out of the box. You could also do this manually with a regular expression. Next, I'm going to be determining if the user actually typed in a valid phone number. I previously made a video on this, but I've learned things since then on how to make this process more efficient. So in the visible property of this check mark, I only want it to show up if it matches a certain condition. I'll go ahead and erase true or false, and I'll start by typing is match. I want to match the whatever I've typed in to this input phone field. Whatever the text is, it should match any digit. Now, I'm going to manually type in how many digits I want. So the expression for a digit is slash D, lowercase t. In curly brackets, I could determine how many digits I want. I want 10. Let's test this out. I'll type in 10 digits, 555555555. Check mark is good. All right. Now let's take, let's take this a step further for the phone number. I do need to redo some of the, uh, I do need to redo a video that I had made about validating a phone number. In what I did in that video is instead of making the user type in a phone number a very specific way, whether it's using parentheses or using hyphens in the correct location, what I'm going to be doing is figuring out what digits they typed in so that I can format the number for them. This saves them a lot of pain and it saves you a headache for not needing to require your users to do a certain thing in a certain way. So here I have included a label where I'm going to be taking whatever's typed into text or this input of the phone number. I'll start by trimming it. And 
it's a good best practice to trim uh, any any text that you're using so that you could get rid of those extra spaces that a user might type at the beginning or at the end by accident. You'll see that everything is identical so far. The next step is I'm going to break this up. I'm going to find out what each digit is into its own row. I could use the split function. I want to split this into a table so that each five is in its own row. That way, I could use the filter function. Filter allows me to compare each of those digits, or each of those characters in this case, to see if they're actually a number. So I'm going to use the isMatch function to achieve that. So whatever is split from this string is called the result. If that result matches a digit, it'll keep it. Otherwise, if it's some kind of other character, like a hyphen that a user types in or a parenthesis, it'll get rid of it. Okay, so now I have all of the numbers. Let's turn it back into a string. So I'm going to flatten that table by concatenating it. I'll concatenate the result. So now it's back to all of those digits. Next, I want to format this the way that I want to. In order to format a number, I have to turn it into a number. Right now it's text, but if I multiply by one, it becomes a value. I could also wrap this entire thing around with value. Uh, multiplying by one is just a little bit easier. Finally, I'm going to take whatever came out of that and I'll use the text function to put it in the format that I want. In this case, I like parentheses. So I'll type parentheses, number, number, number sign, and parentheses, and then number, 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 hyphen, and then four digits for the final numbers. If I play this, you'll see that whatever I had typed in here is pre-formatted. I could type in another one. 999, 999, 99, oops, 9999. And I could even type it outside of the format. And it works. Okay. So ismatch was used not only to determine that there's 10 digits, but I used ismatch to determine and filter which whatever was typed in here, what was actually a digit? And the final field that I'm going to be validating is the website one. For this, I'll be going back to the documentation where if I scroll down, there's a great list of all these uh, predefined patterns that I can use and regular expressions that are already written. It turns out, there's already an isMatch expression made just for validating an HTTP, HTTPS, or FTP URL. The work is already done for us. So I've copied that. Going back to my Power App, and in the visible property of this check mark, I'll make it visible when this is true. And instead of this URL that's already here, I'll put in the name of my control, input website dot text. So anything that's typed in here will be validated against this complicated regular expression. For our purposes, we don't need to understand what's going on in this right now. I'll be showing you a tool in just a second, but let's test this out right now. A website will only work if it matches the criteria. So I'll be typing in uh, HTTPS web.powerapps.com. And you can see that it is already showing up as a check mark because really what it's looking for is this HTTPS part. It's comparing uh, some string here. And the rest of it uh, is could be any, any letters uh, that, that fit 
its regular expression. Now, suppose you wanted to understand that regular expression a little bit more. Well, I've got a great tool for you that I found in learning more about using this regular expression. If you do a search for regular expressions, you'll be able to find a lot more documentation. I actually found the website, Regular Expressions 101. I type in the, I paste in the expression that uh, was provided. You'll notice it helps me out in telling me that I have a pattern error. Turns out these slashes uh, require the other slash to precede it, uh, otherwise it doesn't understand it. So if I put those in, that works better. Okay. Over on the side, it explains each of the groups of letters here. So the first part, it matches either H or uh, HT or F, in other words, HTTP or FTP. And then the next part is it'll determine if you have an S or not. It's okay with either one. So it's a neat tool for understanding regular expressions that other people provide. And then once you reverse engineer these, you can start writing your own regular expressions. I hope you find a good usage for his match inside your apps. It's a powerful tool for validating data. The best part about it is that there's tons of documentation on it already. Just do a quick search for regex or regular expressions, Excel and so on and you'll be able to learn other people's patterns to apply to your own use cases. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more interesting Power Apps, please subscribe.